Intuition, intuition, intuition. I really want for you to pay close attention to what I'm sharing with you here because hmm, when you begin to utilize this amazing tool that our Creator has endowed us with, this completely changes things. It's a game changer when you get in tune. Now, intuition has two different functions, okay? One is the ability to read minds, I guess, or to read the energy of other people. And I know that when I say the word mind, that for some people they start thinking of brain. <laughs> you know, two different things, right? Mind is in everything. Mind is in your skin, mind is in your nails, mind is in your hair. Mind is motion, okay? And so um, mind is everything, um, mind is our essence. Everything that we're seeing is a physical expression of mind, okay? This is what this is. So our hands, our legs, our feet, all of those are expressions of what mind is. So let me deal with the reading of minds and then I'll deal with the second portion or, or the second component of intuition, which is um, our creator communicating with us, okay? So how many of us have ever been, have been in a situation where you, you, know, you connect with somebody, you meet a person and you're like, I get good vibes off this person or I get bad vibes off this person. What you're doing is you are, you're actually picking up on their energy. You're picking up on them, like you're reading intention. So sometimes when you think of reading minds, we're thinking of actually hearing somebody speak or uttering a thought. Even a word, is, although a word is an expressed thought, it's more of a feeling that we get about people, right? When we come, when we come into their presence. And so when you are connecting with somebody, like let's just say for example, it was in a relationship situation. Even if somebody is being nice and kind to you, Internally, sometimes you could feel when something just isn't right. You can feel when something is going wrong. You can sense it, yes? That is reading of mind or reading the energy of the other person. And somebody says, mind, energy, what are you talking about? No, well, this sounds a little bit out there. Okay. Um, let me give you a practical example of something, just to show you something, because I know a lot of people, unless you can pick it up with your five senses, they don't believe it. And uh, so, um, check this out. Take your two of your hands, right? And take, bring, bring them as close as you can together without touching. Start bringing your hands in and out, in and out. You're going to begin to feel a warmth or a magnetism in between your hands. You feeling that? Feeling that? People in studio with me, you all feeling that? <laughs> right. Like this. And so the, what you're actually feeling is your aura or your energy field that's around you, which is actually you that you're feeling. Somebody says, what are you talking about? Right. Actually, no, I'll bring it back to different strokes. What are you talking about in the world? <laughs> Remember Arnold? <laughs> so, the <laughs> we are spiritual beings gifted with an intellect living in a physical body. Spiritual being gifted with an intellect living in a physical body. You are not your body, you are the one that moves the body. So we say, if, let's just say somebody dies or they pass away, what do we say happened to the person? That person's spirit has gone or left the body. Spirit or energy, depending on your belief system. That spirit or energy um, uh, um, uh, had, intelligent, had intelligence connected to it, right? So, um, for most of us, right? so spiritual being gifted with an intellect, living in a physical body. It's no different than you being in your house. You are not your house. You live in your house. You are not your car. You drive the car. So you are the one who drives this thing that we call a body, right? So this, um, is, this body is just an instrument of the mind, I guess, but the spirit or the energy or the life force that's who you are. So when you put your hands and you're feeling the energy, you're feeling that aura, that's all a part of you. We are non-physical beings, okay? So um, encased in, um, in human flesh. So I hope that this makes sense and I hope it's not freaking people out, <laughs> okay? So spiritual beings gifted with an intellect living in a physical body. Now, um, so how does this play into 
um, the energy and picking up energy. Well, we pick up because of the fact that we are, in, in, in effect, spirit. We are, in effect, energy. We can pick up on other people's energy fields. And that's what you're doing when you're, quote unquote, feeling the vibe from somebody, whether it be positive or negative. You, sometimes you can walk into an environment and feel vibes. You know what I mean? Some places make you feel good. Some places make you feel dread. Yes? You're picking up on the energy or the spirit in that space. So, so the first part is learning how to be able to get present with people so that you can really begin to pick up on their energy and, or their spirit. See what they're about. What are they really thinking? What are they really doing? I remember, you know, sometimes having been in sales meetings before and, and anybody out there who's ever been in a sales meeting before, you could feel like you could feel when the meeting is going well and then you can feel when there's an energy shift and it starts going in a different direction. You're like, no, 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 come back. <laughs> you know, you're trying to pull it back, right? So you can literally feel that. That's you reading the energy and spirit of the person that you're communicating with. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Okay. So both for personal, professional, otherwise, we have the ability to pick up on other people's energy or read minds, read their spirit. Now, the second part is the, the, the medium through which the creator communicates with us. I just want to put this out there real quick as, as my sort of disclaimer. This is not meant to be religious, okay? Like this. So whatever you happen to subscribe to, what I want you to do, uh, my, my core, I, I, I tend to use the word God to refer to the creator by. Some people don't like to use that word. They use other words to describe God. Whatever you want to call God, Allah, Jehovah, Jav, collective consciousness, universal mind, whatever works for you. The whole point simply is, is how that force, how that power, I guess, interacts with us. And what does that have to do with what we are producing or creating in our lives or not creating or producing in our lives? That's all for this discussion. That's all I'm interested in. Okay. So hope everybody's good. Right. So the... Um, uh, so, intuition is the medium through which the Creator communicates with us. And so, um, uh, how many of you have ever been in a situation where you said, I knew I shouldn't have done that, or I knew I should have done this. Man, you, I, I knew I should have bought that stock, you know. I knew it. People were telling me I shouldn't do it. I felt it. I knew I should have bought it, and I didn't buy it. Mm. So, you lost out on an opportunity, right? Or you know, I knew I shouldn't have dated that person. Everybody told me, but I just, I, I didn't listen. Uh, I guess, oh, pardon me, it wasn't about everybody else telling you. It was about what you felt. I'm sure most of us can relate on some level at some point in our lives where, whether it was a friendship or was somebody that you were dating or whatever, and you said to yourself internally, you're like, you know, I, I know I really probably should not be with this person. On a conscious level, you're kind of like, mm, yeah, but I did, they're really nice, or they're really cool, and they've got so many other good qualities, this and this and that, but internally, the voice inside you is saying, mm -mm, no good. <laughs> you need to keep on moving, don't stop. In fact, it's not even that. In some cases, inside, inside you're saying, ins your inside voice is saying, run away, <laughs> run, be very afraid, right? So, that inner voice that we here, or um, is it, I wouldn't even say here, but feel, is the Creator talking to us. How does a non-physical being communicate with us? Well, like, like something that has no vocal cords, how, do they, how does that being communicate with us? Through feelings and hunches. Through what? Feelings and hunches. So, your emotional guidance system gives you a sense of what the Creator is communicating with you. So if you're in a state of enthusiasm, so you, like I can give you an example. You have an idea for this business, this thing that you want to do. Man, I'm going to go and create this thing. I want to make this thing happen. And you got you're so enthusiastic, right, about this idea, like you're excited. Did you know that the word enthusia um, enthusiastic comes from uh, the Greek word entheos, which means in God? You know what I mean? It, it's, yeah, I guess, look it up. <laughs> so entheos. So, when you are enthusiastic about something, that means the Spirit of God is with you in that moment. You know what I mean? And you have, because when you got the idea, it illuminates your soul, it excites you, which is why all the books say, follow your bliss. 
follow your heart. Follow that which you, excites you, makes you enthusiastic, makes you passionate. Follow that. You know, that's why it's, it's, people say follow your bliss, right? Follow that which makes you feel good, right, In, inside. So when you get those instructions, part of the problem is that we second guess the voice or, or the feeling that we get. And I'll never forget, you know, uh, Kevin O'Leary from the Dragon's Den and also from the Shark's Tank. He's a venture capitalist, a multimillionaire. And I, I've heard him say multiple times, we're rich because we don't second guess our gut. We're rich because we don't second guess it. And, you know, now he's, he called it your, our gut instinct. Well, the gut, again, has been referred to as the God within. So he wasn't meaning to be spiritual <laughs> when he was talking, but that's precisely what he was doing. It's a feeling that you get, I guess. And when you get in tune with it and you obey it and you get to work immediately, like when? Immediately, things begin to come to you. All of the things that are required to manifest it begin to happen. And part of the reason, like I, some of you, I, I was saying that you had an, idea, had an idea for a business or some concept. You were excited about it, didn't do anything about it or didn't do anything with it. And then somebody that you see years later, somebody else doing the exact same thing that you thought about years ago. And you're like, that was my idea. I had that. I thought about that years ago. Yeah. Well, the creator tried to call you. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. Got something I want you to do. Inspiration is an instruction from our creator to do something. You said, like the idea, but not the right time right now. Like the idea, but I'm not strong enough, not good enough, don't have the contacts, don't have the background, don't have the fill in the blank, right? So you allowed your humanness to interfere with the instruction because here's the thing, and this is something that you really, really got to get. You, most times when we get an inspiration to do something, we don't necessarily see ourselves as that person, sometimes in many cases even capable of making that thing become a reality. But you, you need to know that when you get the instruction, the creator is not going to tell you to do something and then not give you the tools and the resources in order to manifest it. Everything doesn't necessarily come right away, but it always does come. You've heard the term, if you build it, they will come. You just got to get to work and get, uh, and get into a space of faith that knowing that when the creator puts an idea in your mind, that everything that is required to manifest that idea will show up on time in its time. You need to just get to work and let God do the rest. Let, let, let God do what he needs to do. Okay. You, you just got to get to work. Let the universe go to work for you. And that's it. That's the relationship. So let me, somebody says, sounds nice. Noel sounds nice in theory. Can you have any proof? You have any examples of this? Can you prove this? Can you prove it? <laughs> yes, I can. Um, so I'll give you an example with the kickoff of this program that I have here for you. I was in the shower one day and I get this epiphany, I get this idea, this inspiration. You're going to help 10 million people beat procrastination worldwide. Hmm? Me? <laughs> How in the heck? Am I going to do that? Now, I did have a coaching business at the time, but the idea of reaching 10 million people, like, I, how in the heck are you going to do that? That's a lot of people. Given my current resources, given my experience, I have no idea. Like, I haven't talked to mass crowds before. I've talked to big crowds, but not mass crowds before, uh, you know? And so how is it that I'm going to reach 10 million people? So again, idea comes. I have no idea how the heck that that's going to manifest. None. Zero. So then the idea of, you know what, write a book. So I write this book and this was the original version of it is this. Uh, there is no tomorrow, the ultimate guide to beating procrastination, right? So I go through, I won't even tell you about the process of this because this was... <laughs> This was a challenge, okay? Like this, I'm talking about two and a half years of pain, okay? <laughs> so the, uh, <coughs> all, everything that could possibly go wrong, going wrong. 
paying people to do work for me that didn't complete the work and they didn't get the money back, having to go back and forth. And oh, it, if I, it was hell on earth making this thing become real. Like it's, it, was, it was tough. All types of setbacks along the way. And, um, but I had an idea, write the book. So I followed that. There are setbacks and challenges. And one thing I'll say as I continue with the story with you, a lot of times we're expecting that because you know, you're following what's in your heart, you're following the instruction that the Creator gave you, that everything is going to be easy and it's no problems. Oh, no, no, no. Quite the contrary. As soon as you make the decision to move forward with what you, what's within your heart, there is an immediate obstacle course erected between you and the object of your desire. I'm going to say it again. As soon as you make the decision to do something, there is an immediate obstacle course that's erected in between you and the object of your desire. And those obstacles come in different forms for different people. Because the things that will throw me off course may not throw you off course. The things that throw you off course may not throw me off course. Each one of us has different things, right, that we're going to have to deal with. What is the purpose of those obstacles? It's to strengthen us so that we can come into the mind of the person who is capable of receiving that which we, um, what, that, um, the thing that's in our heart. We need to be in a different level of mind or thinking to be able to manifest and maintain and keep the thing that is in our heart. The truth is, a lot of us aren't ready for the things that we're asking for. It's just a, it's just a fact. If you were ready, it'd already be manifested. Have you ever heard stories of um, different artists or different people who came into big money quickly and they ended up blowing all of it and they said, you know what, I wasn't ready for it. I just wasn't ready. You know what I mean? And so in its due time, everything comes, but you need to go through these different challenges to strengthen you, to have you thinking at a higher level so that you could be at a, at a level where you can manage what comes, okay?